Howdy. This is Sailor the Piper Man, Piper the Sailor Man, coming to you another day from the island, the tropical island, the Caribbean island, Puerto Rico. Before it was called Puerto Rico, it was had the Indian in Borinque. And before that, we used to be called by the English the island of the pirates. There were many places on southern Puerto Rico where pirates used to hide out. Why the waters were treacherous in the Atlantic to the Caribbean to really come into Puerto Rico. <clears throat> You had to catch the west winds by the equator in Africa, West Africa, and catch the trade winds and come cruising right in. If you tried from the North Atlantic, Atlantic straight shot into the Caribbean, those waters were rough as hell. You would catch the the northeastern wind, so it would be almost impossible. You would have to zigzag it, and it would take prob probably twice as long. Now, being that I've done across Atlantic, across Pacific, gone up the English Channel, got down the English Channel, been up in the Baltics, been in the Caspian Sea. I've been in the Black Sea. I've been in the. You know, all that stuff is going on. Mediterranean. I've been in the China Seas. The Straits of Magellan. I've gone around the Cape of Good Horn. Indian Ocean, Pacific. Straits of Hormuz. Up, uh, up by Puget Sound, I forgot that area, we're going toward uh, Alaska, is it the Azores, did they have another, no, the Azores are, I've been to the Azores, these are the, uh, right there, right off uh, Russia, talk about, uh, there was actually a film uh, with, uh, about the Coast Guard, and one of the Major actors place uh, retired uh, Coast Guard retiring Coast Guard he has to save that water up there I forgot the name of it really we've done that so the only thing I haven't done is the Red Sea I haven't done the Red Sea and I haven't done Hudson Bay I don't know what that would be like there I heard that was really treacherous <laughs> I've done, I've sailed up some nice lakes, Saratoga Lake, Lake Champlain. And so, a shout out goes to Southern Piper. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. <coughs> Thank you for finding the channel. I want to thank all my subscribers. I can't believe I'm at 200 and something. Something I can't believe. I don't keep track of any of that stuff. I just get online and say what I got to say. Hopefully, it connects with people. Yeah, I'm not a big guy, you know. I don't have a great voice. My voice changes all the time. But let me tell you about Southern Piper. He's got a great voice for radio and podcasts. As soon as I heard him, I was like, wow. I want to think, you know, it's a very manly voice. Uh, the voice. <laughs> very nice presentation. He's very, comes across as very, really a nice person, which is nice, friendly, social. And that's great. That's great. Thank you for subscribing. 
I hope you like the content. It's just me saying what I got to say, you know. And everything I say is always politically correct. <laughs> and a couple of you guys already know that. I try to to tell the truth as I see it, as I visualize it. You know, so I'm here with my queen, Stanwell Pipe, made in the 1960s. It's a very nice pipe. I still believe the whole design thing had to be influenced by Norton. I could be wrong, or maybe Norton was influenced. But I know that Stanwell kept the rights to a lot of the design. And so it's one of my, what'd you say, go-to pipe when I really feel like I want to smoke. And, and lately I've been smoking, as you guys know now, the Royal Blend McBaron. I really like the way the, they, they do their processing. I've seen a couple of videos, outstanding, how they really age the tobacco. This is a, anytime you get a back, McBaron is an aged tobacco. The blender, I talk to the blender. It's very nice. What I understood <laughs> with his deep accent, he said aged tobacco. Very aged tobacco. Uh, I got invitations for the McBaron company for next year to come up. Do a tour, test some new blends. I don't know if we'll be able to go. I, I was so honored. He knew somebody that I knew who kind of mentored me. And uh, his eyes opened up when I mentioned his name. Lester, his name was Lester Hayes. He worked for many, many years as a tobacconist, sales rep. Before that, he was actual pimp. <laughs> was a happy hookup. I think her name was <coughs> Xavier Hollander. And he was in Pro Hop in World War II. Lester was his era of selling tobacco was some. Um, the 60s and 70s. So, Lester took me under his wing. He showed me by by doing. He wasn't these big talkers doing his presentation, what to wear. You know, I was kind of rough in that. Uh, what ties to buy, what watches to wear. How to wear my handkerchief. <laughs> he had all this stuff, you know, like, and, and I became good. I became one of the, the top sellers of MetLife, the guys I was smoking at the MetLife building on, on 54th Street. And uh, when they would throw a party, I'd get an invitation to come and bring cigars to come and, and display a table, De La Concha, all these high profile insurance brokers and stockbrokers and um, executive lawyers took a liking to me, you know, and uh, you know, I'm one of those guys that I don't know everything, but I can pretty much study a certain subject and, and be able to converse about it. General, I was always good at general, not general knowledge stuff, so, you know, when it came to, to Tobacco, I was just in my lane, man. It's like going 100 miles an hour, you know, I can just talk all day on tobacco, the history, the, the different tobacco species. I used to know all that stuff. You know, the name, scientific name is over 2,000, 3,000 species. I, I forgot how many we were, man. I, mean, I can't keep all that in. Just too old. But the nuances of the cigars and, and fillers and binders and and, and 
what makes a good uh, what makes a good petite Corona as to a, a Longsdale cigars, and, and then I used to do some bl a blind testing, and they were amazing. I can't believe I used to do that blind testing. I was not taught; it was a natural thing. Uncles taught me to, to try different uh, tobacco leaves on the lower end, from the mid and the top end, you know, and the how to how to uh, put cigar together, nice medium body cigar together. And uh, my uncle uh, was one of the main uh, uh, creators of the. Tamo cigar. My my uncle smoked every day. He worked both the tobacco and sugar cane fields. And uh rugged guy, he lived like ninety seven to about he was ninety seven. We used to call him Paco. Tio Paco. Great friends with George Burns and George Burns used to like I said in the previous view, used to fly him in. When he was uh, help manage the uh, uh, night owl Dutch masters here on the island, machine made, he used to put in the fillers Cuban leaf, and then roll them up, the wrapper homogenize. Sometimes it was the reverse. Uh, outside, this is post pre Castro. That's when he was able to do all that stuff. So. I got a good natural uh, two tobacco. You're all the big cigar makers. Personally, Padron was my favorite. I used to like this his Padron Square square box cigars. Then I told him years ago. I told him you should make you should make um a pipe smokers. Oh, you think so? You think so? He found that so odd. You know he that's that's the one area I think that cigar makers make the mistakes of not venturing in and producing. A pipe blend. Some have Macanudo, I think. I think Cohiba does. And uh, I like them. I like the. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go out and purchase a couple of pipe blends. I mean, uh, cigar blend, pipe tobacco, and try them out. And do a review on that. Well. That's it for now. Go watch some some news. Watching the Russians getting the butt kicked. Well, finally, there's some kind of offensive going on. Oh, one thing. I'm going to have to call this uh, random thoughts. Not for anything. Right, I underestimated Biden and his foreign policy. A lot of people wanted to sway him here and there. I always knew he was a moderate, and he's shown in his foreign policy very moderate. He's not an extremist, right wing. Let's go kick butt. He's not too liberal. Not doing anything and allowing, and he's. He's steered an interesting course, whether it's the right course or not, but to keep us from a major World War III, oh man, sometimes I, I think of the Bay of Pigs, you know, so I, I have to give him props, you know, I have to give him a little props, this is not, it is not an easy thing to handle. People's lives are on the line. American lives are on the line. He's, he's doing the right thing, allowing the Europeans to lead.
So, so let's see what continues to happen there. I think Totem put out a lot of these mercenaries. The mercenaries for a long time. And the money these guys are getting to go in there and wreak havoc. These mercenaries have been at it for a long time, have had great success in it. You always get the newbies, somebody that wants to be mercenary. These guys know what they're doing, you know? The one thing about mercenaries can easily change size. You can easily talk a mercenary to work for anybody. Well, it's all about money. That's the danger. We're using mercenaries. A contract killer, that's what they are. Hired assassins. That's what we've got. That's happened during the medieval, in the knights era, the dark ages. That has always existed. So if you go home oh, the that they're using it, that's always happened. Always. Proxy wars have always happened. Guerrilla warfare has always happened. It's just, you know, it, it depends on your lens and how you look at it. That being said, they did the pipe and pipe of the sailor man. This is so nice. I'm smoking this right now. The vanilla cream loose cut for each tobacco. Modern Black Cavendish Virginia Tobacco. H Virginia Tobacco and Modern Black Cavendish. Then blended with an exceptional vanilla flavor. Really nice. Exceptional vanilla flavor. <laughs> Sailor the Pipe and Pipe of the Sailor Man. Signing off. Remember, whatever you can't finish today, you can finish tomorrow. Take it easy, smoke up. Any change in the industry as far as tobacco prices, please give me a shout out. Let me know. Hasta la vista, baby. Oh, <sighs>